All right, what's going on guys? It's your boy Nistro here, and we are back today talking about Super Heavy Samurai. And this deck is insane. So what you're seeing in front of you is the first place list of the deck that topped like an online case tournament. And so me being someone who's enjoyed Super Heavy Samurai since it very first came out, right? Like you could go to my channel and probably see the very first Super Heavy Samurai video that I ever made. Knowing that there was more support, I wanted to give the deck another shot. This deck has had a lot of chatter in like the past week. Like everyone kind of knows what's going on with Super Heavy Samurai now. If you're not already in tune with how broken this new support is, let me show you something real quick. So I'm gonna head into the Earth Machine Discord, right? Uh, because I didn't show it much on this channel, but um, I was a very big Infinitrack player, um, Infinitrack Earth Machine player for pretty much the entire time that you guys haven't seen me and I was still playing, right? So this is the Earth Machine spreadsheet. Uh, oh, oh no, this this is the Super Heavy Samurai spreadsheet, right? There are actually Earth Machine spreadsheets for Machina, regular Earth Machine. There's gear frame combos, regular combos, even Naturia combos. I, I guess they've started to expand from uh, machines and just did plain Earth, but there's Vernosilf, regular gear frame, and this particular sheet is talking about the potential of Super Heavy Samurai. And if you just drag down here, this very first section is to show you that like no matter what opener that you draw, you can you can make the same starting board, right? Um, so you pretty much make the Baron plus a pendulum scale, right? Um, that's that's pretty much the um, the like standard way of starting a Super Heavy turn, right? Um, you can do this with pretty much any of the relevant Super Heavy Samurai monsters that you're playing in your list. So you go, uh, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm just gonna let you guys watch it because it's gonna be the same thing every time. But essentially, you make uh, a Scarecrow and then you find a way to get into Wakashi, uh, Prodigy Wakashi, and then you discard with bike so that you have bike and grave so that you can special summon super heavy samurai prodigy from the pendulum scale you can then summon back the soul piercer using scarecrow's effect by discarding one which is why this upstarts in grave and then you synchro eight into this excel synchro starter dragon which when it's synchro summoned it, it allows you to summon a level two or lower tuner from your graveyard now um if you do it right the synchro stardust is supposed to be the fourth summon and the bike is supposed to be the fifth right and they could nib you before you make the baron but um if you play the original stardust uh excel stardust synchro can actually tribute itself special summon stardust as a quick effect and then synchro summon and then the monster that you synchro summon is unaffected by card effect so basically you pretty much guarantee a baron and you get baron out while building your pendulum scale so even though you summon the Super Heavy Samurai Prodigy using its own effect, once it's used for a Synchro Summon, it actually chain blocks the Soul Piercer. So the Soul Piercer would be chain link one, Wakashi chain link two, and Wakashi puts itself back on scale, Soul Piercer searches, and then you make Stardust, and then Stardust summon out bike. And you know, if they have the nib, you can chain Stardust effect. If they don't have the nib, then you go into Baron. We've searched maybe like, three different cards just in this first, you know, one card combo alone. And so another thing about this deck is that it is very susceptible to Droll and Lockbird. And so the ultimate thing that you really need to know when you're playing Super Heavy Samurai is that everyone is going to be on Droll and Lockbird. So you're going to need your Gamma. Now, when you're going to see me and my friend in our replays, we are going to be playing around Gamma quite a bit because we just don't want to lose to it. You don't want to kick off your Droll and Lockbird if they if if the first thing that they do is re is resolve Super Heavy Samurai Bike. You want to save your Droll and Lockbird for after they have a monster on field, so that Gamma is no longer usable. Most lists are not going to be playing Cyframe Lambda, so once they st start to summon monsters, they're if they still have Gamma in their hand, it's probably going to be dead. It's probably going to be dead. So they're going to be anxious to use their Gammas before they actually start summoning out monsters and stuff. A lot of cool tech cards in, in the deck, like we have Ancient Gearbox. Now, most lists 
play Ancient Gear Ballista so that it takes any two Earth Machines and it adds Ancient Gear Box from deck to hand. And when Gear Box is added from deck to hand, you get to add Tunneler. And then when Tunneler, Tunneler can summon itself from hand and you either use it for a Link Summon. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you would just use it for a Link Summon since this is not Earth Machine. You can banish it from your grave, then shuffle back five Earth Machines, which, you know, setting up your very first combo, you immediately get two in grave and then we can activate Peacemaker after this, you know, to get both two more in grave. So it, it, it's, it's not going to be hard to get five Earth Machines in grave, basically, by the time you're going into Tunneler um, in your combo. You know, the getting to draw two is actually really significant. It's like, it, it's sort of like a super heavy samurai is like Earth Machine if it didn't have any restrictions, right? Like the really like you're trading the restriction of being locked into earth machine monsters for the restriction of not being able to play spell and trap cards i think it works for super heavy samurai really well as a matter of fact i think most people can agree that if this deck could play spell and trap cards it would probably be too strong so going over the cards if you don't already know bike discards to add a super heavy from deck to hand it also has a second effect which i did not know until yesterday that it could increase any machine monsters level by two and it's and it's a soft once per turn on that second effect so if you summon it multiple times you can keep increasing its level by two or other monsters by two so you can use it to make rank fours more consistently or just for synchro summons in general. Um, you could turn it into level four to make Excel Stardust live or even Borload live. Prodigy, Prodigy is like the best card out of all the new support. So first off is that if it's on scale, it summons itself from scale and then it places another super heavy samurai from scale from deck. So he gets to go on into the monster zone and then you place Big Benkei and then Big Benkei can immediately activate its its effect because it'll have the you know condition of you controlling a super heavy samurai monster you can add a soul monster from your deck to your hand and we play four souls we play soul piercer we pay soul gaia booster which is a new one we play soul claw and we play soul peacemaker piercer is at three because it's a one card starter but the other ones are at one because they're all searchable and they're not one card starters basically everything that you see at three on this list will, will either be a hand trap or a one card starter um so soul gaia booster booster uh when he he can equip himself from hand and the monster that he's equipped to is treated as a tuner but most people aren't going to use that effect because you can summon him after you equip him from your hand meaning that he is really just an extender that is susceptible to mst basically same thing with soul claw he is a extender that is susceptible to mst it also has 500 defense so if you already have tunnler you could search soul claw off a of gearbox Soul Claw is like the least important extender in the deck, like because it's level two. So really, it's gonna be really hard to use this for any exceed summons. You're mostly gonna be using this for link summons. Just keep that in mind. Big Benkei, as I said, you're, you're really not gonna be using his monster effect, but his monster effect is you can mill the regular Big Benkei to summon him from hand, but you, you don't play that. Both Big Benkei and Prodigy, they both have the effect of if they're, if they're used as synchro material, you can place them into your pendulum zone, from your field into your pendulum Zone, it's just like your scales won't won't match up for you to be able to summon big bank hey with a pendulum summon most of the times like if you draw him he's probably going to be stuck in your hand assuming you don't activate him on scale or assuming you you know already have a way into scale because wakashi needs to place a scale to summon itself so ultimately the one in your hand you can use as discard fodder for like scarecrow or other things like that and if you're not familiar with the older Super Heavy Samurais, uh, Piercer searches and it can equip itself, scales, summons from Grave in defense. And it's also a little cyber dragon kind of effect. Wagon is the most interesting one because he has to search any Super Heavy Samurai soul monster by switching his battle position. Scarecrow, he's a link one. So like he immediately triggers Soul Piercer Searches effect. So it's it's sort of like it's sort of like prank kids where they just had a link one that just enabled all their combos if they drew any super heavy. Um, I mean, if, if they drew any prank kid, super heavy samurai is going to be that same way, except we're not going to be ending on DPE Battle Butler. We're going to be ending on Apo, Baron, uh, Borload, Zeus, maybe. Sargus or this deck plays Fenrir. We're going to be playing. We're going to be going into Regulus. Lots of possibilities for what Super Heavy Samurai can do. With all that said and done, let's get into the replays. So me and my friend, we, we only played two matches because we were playing until like one in the morning here. This is just me and my friend fucking around. Um, he he wanted me to help him play test Super Heavy Samurai. And so we decided to do the mirror match because I've never actually played the, the new support yet. I just wanted to see what people would discover first. It's been years since I played this deck, but I kind of understand what the cards do. And I've looked at the spreadsheet a little bit. It just, 
look at look at how much shit there is on this spreadsheet okay i've i i i didn't want to dive into this shit yet okay so i've, I've only discovered it a little bit but okay so i start with wakaoshi i forgot what happens here i accidentally searched the wrong one right and so he drops droll and i'm like okay I'm going to go for Peacemaker, right? Because that's the correct thing to do. If you want to play around Droll, you cannot search Soul Piercer. You can't search um, one of your soul monsters that isn't Peacemaker because Peacemaker is, is objectively the best one to search. And we also already have Wagon in hand. We can still make our level six synchro. Unfortunately, going going for bike wouldn't be the best thing to, to go into here. I mean, we we can't go into bike because Big Bang K only searches the soul monsters. But yeah, so we don't even attempt to activate wagon's effect because again droll and lockbird so we instead just soul peacemaker tribute wagon go into scales and use scales here bring out wagon go into baguska and pass turn and he nibiru's me before i pass and ultimately he's just gonna get this game because there's just nothing i can do i have two hand traps that are live and he's still able to make aza go into scales go into his own Sargus and just, you know, get so much advantage that like, it's kind of impossible for me to do anything about it. I, I really wish I could have done something about this um, Zeus, but I I was already so behind that I was like, let, let me see if I could potentially save this uh, Gamma for my turn. And um, it just did not do enough, um, honestly. We lose that game one, right? Opponent drew Droll and Lockbird. We got so much advantage because I couldn't make a solid board. He Droll and Lockbird plus Nib, by the way. And look, he has another Droll in hand, right? So after I, um, so I, I start off with Bike because, you know, I, I knew that if I started off with Bike, he would not Droll and Lockbird me if he had it because he doesn't want to play into Gamma. But um, once I went to Soul Piercer and, um, linked off into Scarecrow and I got to search. That's when he drove and Lockbird me. So now we got the Wakuishi, uh, we have Scales, and we already have Regulus, which is why I was feeling a little goofy because I'm like, wait, if he didn't do it on bike, I could have Regulus into bike, but then that's actually kind of minus two because then it's harder to make the, um, the Baron or anything. So I wouldn't have Baron, but Regulus would have been on board to protect me from at least the Droll, right? Um, and the fact that I drew two DD Crows here is actually going to work against me. I, I cited DD Crow in because, um, I saw the list was playing Bistials. They were playing Bistials and I was like, Hmm, I knew I was, I was about to play a mirror match. All right. I'm, I'm not going to cap with you. So I'm like, okay, he's playing Bistials. Let me put DD Crows in the side because they're, I guess they're more relevant. They can stop Scarecrow bringing back monsters and excel stardust bringing back bike i guess it's so it, it is low impact but it's not once per turn so i thought with 2dd crow i would be okay but um you will come to see why that is not the case so we go into regulus now um we scarecrow effect we bring out scales uh scales bring out soul piercer and I was thinking really hard about what I should do. It, it looks really stupid. I know, like, <laughs> you know, like wa watch what I do next. You know, like it, it, it's it is just like I could have made an Appalooza and instead I ended up getting rid of my Regulus to go for an Aza because I was like, hmm, is there a way where I can build a board that still has follow up plus a single negate or two to interrupt my opponent because my opponent only has you know is only going to have five cards in hand they already used rolls so it's like it's mostly because you can't link off with scarecrow is like one of the challenges with playing this deck like with like some of the routes in this deck like if you get troll and lockbird and you have scarecrow on board Unless you have a Peacemaker, this is staying on the field. This is staying on the field like nine out of 10 times. Like unless you have Tunneler or a Peacemaker, this this Scarecrow is staying on field. So it, it, it's, it's frustrating that like we can't do something with this card after using its initial effect. But um, yeah, 
we we could have simply made Scarecrow plus Apo pass. Um, we could have made like a Fornigate Apo. But like, I was like, you know what? Let me try the way with a little more follow up and maybe making the Apo was correct here. But um, I decided to do something a little different just to see. Just to see like what this deck can like can really do, right? So he goes for his own Excel Stardust. I chain DD Crow. Um, he gets Wagon off Piercer. He Pendulum Summons. Now, um, we we actually did catch this later, but um, you actually cannot um, Pendulum Summon Gamma because it has to be summoned by card effect. And he's still popping off here. He he did summon his, his Ash. Like he, he went all out. He didn't, you know, hold anything back. He was like, you know, I, I know I'm not going to need these hand traps anymore. And I was I was a little goofy, too, because I did not Baron anything on his field before I before he made his own Baron. I was tempted to negate the Wakashi, but I, I knew like that wouldn't do anything if he had like a piercer. He could just search another one and just activate another one. Um, Maybe I could have negated the effect to summon itself and that would have been effective, but still, he still would have been able to get a pendulum scale. Like, only having one negate against Super IV Samurai feels really bad. Even with the two DD Crow, it's like, I was hoping like he wouldn't be able to extend, but literally I have Regulus in my grave. Aza just kills my board completely. Um, Zeus could just kill my board completely. There is, there is not a lot of ways where I could have made it out of this situation in good stead. So, yeah, I, you know, he activates Scarecrow, I DD Crow him again, and look at that, look at how low impact that fucking DD Crow was, like, it, it, it did nothing, don't, don't even bother, like, he, he has two Regulus on board, he has two Regulus on board, and, um, yeah, he, he popped my fucking, um, Baron, and so we you know, went to the next game. Now, this game, look at this. No hand traps, no droll. Let's go, let's let's fucking pop off, okay? Um, so we start off with bike, you know, to, to play around uh, droll. Well, Kaoshi, we get, uh, we go into wagon. Now, the reason why I didn't summon Fenrir here be is because I knew that if I summoned Fenrir and he had droll, he would immediately droll me and he doesn't have any field, so it's not like Fenrir would be able to banish anything, right? Like, if this was a unicorn, I, maybe I would have summoned it, but Fenrir, no. Fenrir doesn't do anything. Um, but anyway, we're able to get into Excel Star uh, Synchro Stardust Dragon, go into Baron, Pendulum Summon, pop the hell off, get the Soul Claw, uh, get the Fenrir Search, and we're going to use the Fenrir to discard, to bring back, get the Sargus, go into Regulus, and we get Peacemaker, get rid of uh, Scarecrow, turn bike into level eight, go into Boreload, Regulus. Um, I said turn bike into level eight. I mean, turn bike into level four. Um, so at this point, right, I have three negates or, or three known negates, at least um, a Fenrir and Ashen Hand with follow up on Soul Claw and Wakashi. Like, I am set. Right, like he would have to open fucking sphere mode plus Raigeki, right? Like he would need the Silver Fang combo itself to break this board. And so like, I, I just started to be generous because I'm like, I know Super Heavy needs to resolve like quite a number of effects before they can go off. I'm not gonna negate the first thing that I see because I know all it takes for this deck is one starter. So. I'm going to wait until he gets into his actual problem cards, and then I'm going to try to stop those. So here he goes with, uh, you know, Piercer. He goes into Scarecrow. Um, and so it, it, it was actually kind of funny. Um, he. Oh, I, I don't know why he put the Scarecrow back into extra deck, but basically he um, he, he he went Soul Piercer and he went into Scarecrow, and then because, you know, the Scarecrow was still on board after he used his um, Soul Piercer, I was like, let me just Fenrir banish that thing. Let me just Fenrir banish, right? And 
yeah, it was just way too much for him to, to handle because I didn't even use a negate. Or maybe I did actually. Wait, did I? I'd even use a negate, right? Uh. No, no, I did not. And I still had three negates on board, one one ash in hand, and he already used his normal summon. He lost his scarecrow. All he had was soul piercer. I don't think he could have won that game, but regardless, um, that's what Super Heavy does going first. Now, look at this fucking hand. Look at this fucking hand. And like, I remember, um, you know, as he's playing this out, he does complain about drawing box here. Um, also, I did sort of play into Gamma by ashing the bike, but I kind of didn't care at this point because I was like, let me just because because I also had the nib. I was feeling like a little quirky. I definitely should have waited to ash, but it's OK. Uh, so now he gets Piercer. He gets Prodigy, Prodigy, go into the combo. Boom, boom, boom. And he adds Peacemaker instead, right? Uh, he drops and then he goes for Stardust, right? So Wakashi is about to go into scale and um, goddamn Nib is Nib is actually live here. Um, and at, at first, like I, I thought that I miscounted. I thought Excel Synchro was Excel Stardust was only um, summon number four and that I miscount uh, I miscounted and bike would be five but it turns out that he actually did summon five because he summoned piercer one uh scarecrow two piercer uh wakashi three soul piercer four and then draw and lock uh, no not draw and lock bird and then stardust number five right so because stardust is summon number five and it's the only monster on his field or the only monster with a level on his field. I mean, he does have Scarecrow, right? And this is this is going to go into scale real quick. Um, it is actually correct to Nibiru right now, because if I don't Nibiru right now, then he goes into Baron. And the reason why that's an issue is because um, if, if he were able to bring back Bike, then Bike, then he would be able to chain Excel Synchro Status Dragon to my Nibiru to be able to summon a Baron that is unaffected by card effects. And we don't want that. We don't want that at all. So thankfully, Excel Synchro was summon number five, so I could actually use Nibiru here. And so he gets a wagon off Piercer and I get to um, nib him. Now the bike does still come back because Excel Synchro on summon summons back the monster. So he does still get to go into bike and he does still have the soul pierce maker in his hand. So just just look at how he recovers from this, right? Two hand traps. Admittedly, the first one was a little poorly timed, but um, he 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 summoned to the wrong zone. So I, I let him switch zones and then he pendulum summons. He, he gets Sargus. Uh, he goes bike here off of Piercer. He gets uh, Regulus off of uh, Sargus, and look at this. Even even after a nib, he ends on two negates and a Droll and Lockbird. Okay, like that's kind of, that's kind of unfair. <laughs> um, so okay, so he 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 drolls me on bike because I have nib on field. So even if I had Gamma, um. I wouldn't be able to, to do anything about it. And because he sends his Regulus, he gets Soul Piercer effect to get follow up. And so now he gets to bore load. He he, he bore loads my um, bike activation, I believe. I believe he did, right? He, he, he bore loaded my bike activation and I used it to go into Scarecrow and then I discarded bike to bring bike back and then I use this effect again because it's a soft ones per turn, and then I overlaid into rank four. And I went into my own Sargus, and I, I kind of goofed up here because I thought I could go into Aza and steal something, but actually Aza needs to needs you to point to the monster that you summon back. So because Scarecrow is stuck on my field, 
Aza is actually worthless. So this is something that like is is going to be really helpful in the future, because now when I'm locked under droll, I should side out Aza. Like if I know my opponent is like, you know, going to open droll or play into droll, uh, like maybe I shouldn't go into Aza like at all unless I have a way into Soul Piercer. Which did kind of make me goof up here because like there was like almost nothing else I could do about um, because even with Sargus, like the whole deal with Sargus is that I like go into Zeus and stuff. But, you know, I didn't just want to have Zeus. I wanted to have like at least one negate or something. And that just like could not happen in this situation. So I bring back my Nibiru. I attack over his Sargus. Um, and I attack over Token, go into Zeus. And this is where I goofed up number one because his Borload had no negates left. So I could have saved the first wipe for when he starts to play because this, this Borload isn't really threatening anything, right? Because uh, it, it only has 3K attack, so um, it can't hit over Zeus. And the only thing that he could do to start was maybe resolve Wakashi effect or something like that to like use what he already has on field. But because I Zeus preemptively, this actually cost me the game. So he goes bike, he adds another Wakashi, and then he activates Wakashi effect. And literally, if I would have waited, um, I could have done, I, I, I could have, you know, made a way better um, play here and wiped as soon as he activated the Prodigy in scale so that he would not be able to get its effect for the rest of the turn. And I mean, he, he would still be able to get Big Bang K in scale, but then he wouldn't have the extender and he would need to summon wagon. And then on the wagon summon, I could uh, chain Zeus again. And that would have been it, right? So he gets Big Bang K here. And at this point, I'm like, I might as well just let him go into what he goes into because I want him to activate his effects before I I wipe the board again in the like rare case that he has more extenders, right? So he goes into Ballista, he goes into Spy, and then um, I am sort of caught off guard by this Ballista effect because Ballista actually does change defense to zero as well. So you destroy one spawn trap card you, you control and one monster your opponent controls, you target it and its attack and defense becomes zero. So he basically forces me to board wipe here, um, which again, complete rookie mistake, but I, I made sure he went into battle phase before I wiped so that I, I at least had Zeus to do something. And now he has like two extenders, three, three extenders in hand, actually. Um, and he gets to make Baron pop the Zeus and literally I'm like, dude, I literally drew droll. Like this is, this is my first time drawing droll the whole set. And then I drew a second one and I'm like, wow, this is, this is fucking hilarious. So like my, my whole thing was that like, if I drew a soul piercer, I could have, um, you know, after that first roll, I mean, w w when I drew that second card, if that second card was a soul piercer, I could have normaled, went into scarecrow, um, piercer search. And, you know, I could have baited out the Baron negate and then potentially still had to play. But because I drew two droll, there was there was nothing I could do, um, right? So now we're going first, and thank God there is there is no droll and lockbird in his hand, so um, we do get to play here. So we go into Wakashi. Um, Wakashi goes into scale. We go Borload, and the reason why I wanted to go Borload here is because um, I deliberately did not resolve Scarecrow. And instead, I went Peacemaker, Tribute Scarecrow, Summon another Piercer, Synchro 8 into Borload so that I had it on Summon number 5 in case he had Nib, right? Because I was like, I did, I don't want to play into Nib or anything like that. So I'm just going to, um, you know, go into Borload. 
So then we get the pendulum summon and I actually do catch the, the, the gamma effect here. So I'm not able to pendulum summon gamma, which is fine. Uh, we get scales and wagon. Um, and he goes for gamma here, which I end up ashing. And then I quickly realized after that how stupid it was to ash the gamma because it's like gamma is not once per turn and he still has no monsters. I don't know why the fuck I, I wasted an ash on that thing. But he, um, Gamma's my wagon. I go into Scarecrow a second time here. And now I'm able to, uh, get bike. Right? Okay. Uh, to get Soul Guy booster, use, um, use Scarecrow, summon bike back out, summon, uh, Soul Guy booster. Overlay into Gear Gigant. And so this deck doesn't play Ballista, it only plays Gear Gigant. And so here I Gear Gigant into box, right? I could have easily made, um, goddamn ancient gear ballista there anyway but actually going into gear Gigant actually benefited me because box is able to still get the tunneler and, and now i have an even bigger 2300 body on board so now we get to tribute our scarecrow which you know thank god we can we go into genius here because i just needed space um I, I just needed a way to get rid of the Tunneler just to put it in Grave, so I just go into Genius. I didn't want to go into Aza yet because it's like, what's the point? Where Genius, it's like, at least it's, you know, unaffected by Link monsters, I guess. Uh, and so we resolve Tunneler here. And this is actually perfect because the next card that I draw is actually the last card that I needed. Um, because I basically used every super heavy samurai effect that could special summon itself. So the reason why I went into um, Tunneler here is because I needed a way to make uh, fucking Apo. Um, I, I wanted to have like a multi negate monster instead of just like a Baron. And so that's why I took the risk, went into Apo a bit. And he goes bike, I, I, I negate, he goes Wakashi, I negate with uh, Borload. He goes uh, Scarecrow, I have the DD Crow. And he does, he is still able to make a, uh, actually no, this, this this is not him making a board. This is him just admitting that there was nothing else that he could do there. Um, but yeah, Super Heavy Samurai, it is quite a deck. Um, it is quite a fun deck and I had a, a amazing time playing it. Um, the deck is relatively inexpensive other than the extra deck and it's a pretty fun deck to play so i suggest that you guys should try uh give super heavy samurai a shot if you know you want to play at locals or um even people who are you know play testing for like actual big events the ycs's nationals they're even looking at super heavy seeing how viable is this deck um ultimately Kashira and you know runic and sprite are still around so we're going to have to wait for a ban list to see if Konami does anything to those decks. Because if Kashira is still around when, you know, Super Heavy comes out, you know, I think it's going to be interesting because Super Heavy is mostly like, okay, building big negate boards with like heavy combo. And Kashira is like, man, you know, I have this one Arise Heart that, you know, <laughs> that doesn't really do much, you know? Um, I think it would completely take over the meta, but, um, maybe against something like, uh, Runic, it might not be a as good if, you know, Runic gets to set up first. It's, it's very susceptible to Droll and Lockbird and people, you know, are going to be playing Droll and Lockbird a lot more now anyways, because of, uh, you know, this deck and Pearly and yeah. So let me know what you guys think about Super Heavy Samurai. If you're hyped for the deck, if you're tired of seeing another combo deck that just does too much. Um, and I will catch you guys in the next video about Cyberstorm Access.